reading this morning is from Luke chapter 24, 36 to 49. While they were still talking about this Jesus, himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were sold and frightened, thinking they saw a ghost. He said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do you doubt? Raise in your minds. Look at the hands and my feet. I myself touch me and see a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see I have. When he said this, he showed them his hands and feet. And while they still did not believe it because of joy and amazement, he asked them, Do you have anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in the, their presence. He said to them, This is what I told you while I was still here with you. Everything <coughs> must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the, and the Psalms. Then he opened their minds so they could understand the scripture. He told them, this is what is written. The Messiah will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day. And repentance for the forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations. Beginning at Jerusalem, you are witness to these things. I am going to send you what my Father has promised. But stay in the city until you have been clothed in power from, from high, from, from on high. We're God, the people of God. Thank you. Let us pray. O gracious God, in the hearing of your word, may we believe. We pray that you will help our unbelief. In the name of Christ we pray. Amen. What's fascinating to me about this reading from the Gospel of Luke and reflected in the other Gospels as well is in the disciples' experience of Christ being raised from the dead. Um, in many cases, it's not convincing to them. Uh, it takes a lot for some of them to be convinced. Uh, as it would for any of us, I suspect, we don't expect someone who's died to get out of the tomb and walk around again and talk to us. Uh, they saw him crucified. They saw him die. Uh, some saw him put into the tomb. He wasn't breathing anymore. Um, he had been pierced in the side. He hanged, hung for hours on the cross. He was physically dead. And yet, a few days later, he's walking around in some kind of body. I mean, he's able to be seen. Not everyone recognizes him at first. He has to do something or talk to them or call them by name, and then suddenly they see that this is indeed Christ, again, alive. They see that he's in some kind of body because he takes fish and bread and he eats it. What kind of resurrection body is that that we should expect as those who follow in the way of the risen Christ? He says, touch me, fill me. See these marks on my hand and on my side. And we see again in Luke today where it says Jesus comes to them. They're startled. They're terrified. They think they're seeing a ghost. He says, why are you frightened and why do doubts arise in your hearts? And it's that I'd like to center on for a little bit this morning because I think all of us experience the human condition of doubting whether it's in our own personal lives, 
relationships, um, things of this world, uh, but also there are times in our own Christian faith that we have doubts about things as Christians. The interesting thing to me about this passage is when he shows his hands and his feet, he says, while in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said, have you anything here to eat? And then in the next paragraph, what does Jesus do? He sends them out to proclaim repentance, forgiveness of sins to all the world, beginning from Jerusalem. And he's saying to disciples in the same breath that they doubt that you are my witnesses. I mean, who wants to send doubters into the world to witness to Jesus? He says, you're frightened, you're wondering, you're doubting whether I am the risen Christ, but you are my witnesses and you're going to go out and proclaim forgiveness of sins. I mean, wouldn't you rather have somebody who really believes in you go out? Wouldn't you really have somebody who strongly affirms and says, hey, that's Jesus, I believe he rose from the dead. Isn't that the kind of follower you want to go out to proclaim the good news? But Jesus sends out doubters into the world. <coughs> How do you send out doubters into the world? To witness to Christ. Well, he sends out you and me, we're doubters. I mean, if we really had to confess to it, there are a lot of things that, that we at times find ourselves doubting, particularly about our Christian faith. Does God really love me? Does God really forgive me of these sins? Did Jesus really rise from the dead? When I die, will I rise from death into new life? Have you ever doubted that? Have you ever raised questions about that? Do you know the story of um, Mother Teresa of Calcutta of India? She was in the news a lot over the years. Um, she was born... Um, in Yugos what was formerly Yugoslavia, it's now, I think, the Republic of Macedonia, but southeastern Europe. Um, and she was around 18 when she got a call as a young woman to become a nun in the Roman Catholic Church. And she was sent to the Sisters of Loretta in Ireland, and there she lived out about 20 of her years in this order of sisters, uh, living a very happy uh, spiritual life as a nun. Uh, but then at the age of about 38, the late 30s, she started having these mystical, mystical experiences of Christ. Christ started coming to her and saying, Teresa, I want you to go to India and I want you to minister to the poorest of the poor in the world. She was so committed to a life of Christ that she didn't hesitate. She went. She moved to Calcutta, India and she lived the next 50 years of her life ministering to the poorest of the poor. Sunday school, when I attended, uh, and I hadn't for the last few weeks, we were doing confirmation class, Sunday school sometimes tends to alter what I had in mind to do Sundays. You guys do that when you teach Sunday school, you know. But, but the topic was follow me. 
Jesus calling his disciples saying, follow me. I mean, what a testimony to a human being called by Christ some kind of mystical way saying, go to India, live the rest of your life among the poorest of the poor, follow me. And Mother Teresa, as she became known, went to India and lived the next 50 years of her life among the poorest of the poor. What a testimony her life is to following Christ. I mean, she lived among those who were outcast by Indian society because they had leprosy. I mean, she nursed them, cared for them, touched them, kissed them in their dying with leprosy. And lived out 50 years of her life as a follower of Jesus Christ among the poorest of the poor and among the diseased. She died about 21 years ago now, I guess. And... Um, after her death, letters that she had written to her spiritual directors over these 50 years of her ministry in Calcutta, India, fell into the hands of the church. They were letters, interestingly, mostly written to God. <laughs> that revealed over these years of her life the tremendous doubts that she had in her faith. Questioning at times whether God even exists, that God would, would allow people to live the way they were living. And her letters are filled with doubts of faith, <laughs> questions about God. Here's one of them I wrote down in, in reading. These have been assembled together in a book entitled, Come Be My Light. How to get hold of it, read her letters and, and, and see the doubts that this woman who became a saint of the church in the Roman Catholic Church just a year and a half ago, canonized as a saint, the life that she lived in following Jesus the Christ and what she gave up to that <laughs> life of commitment and yet, through all of those years, so often lived in doubt, questions of faith. Where is my faith, she wrote, even deep down, there's nothing but emptiness and darkness. It pains without ceasing. I have no faith. I dare not utter the words and thoughts that crowd in my heart and make me suffer untold agony. So many unanswered questions live within me. If there be God, please forgive me. When people got hold of these letters, which she never wanted to be public, but they were made public. When people got hold of these letters, they asked the question, how can this woman who, in every exhibition of her life, every example of her life, was a faithful follower, witness, disciple of Jesus Christ, and could write those kinds of letters to God with doubts about her faith? Was she a fake? Was she a liar? And one person who wrote about her letters said this. When Jesus was hanging on the cross and dying, he cried out with the words, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Was Jesus a fake and a liar? Of course not. But in his moments of greatest doubt, Jesus was the closest to God. And that's what these letters of Mother Teresa came to reveal. That as she sank deeply into the dark nights of her soul, 
in caring for the poorest of the poor, wondering how this can be in this world. People who had leprosy and were dying of leprosy, when she felt so desolate and alone and isolated and began to doubt and question, the bottom line truth was those were the moments when Mother Teresa became the closest to God. Now the good news of that for you and me is that we should realize that in moments of our own spiritual doubting, if we have those moments, does God really love me? Why would God allow that to happen in my life? Why would God allow me to be sick the way I'm sick? <coughs> Why would God allow this to happen to me? Where is God? Does God really love me? Does God really forgive me for what I've done? Those questions of doubts that enter the life and the mind, the heart of every single Christian. Admit it. Each of you, me, times in our life when we've had doubts, it wasn't just blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. But it was saying, whoa, where is God when I needed God? Where, where is God now? Where is, do I really believe in resurrection from the dead? Have not most any and every Christian raised questions of faith and doubt? My God, my God, said Jesus from the cross, why have you forsaken me? In those moments of doubt, Jesus actually probably shed any false images that were of God and became <coughs> closer to God than Jesus ever had been. And probably that's what was happening in the life of Mother Teresa. That her doubts, her questions at times caused her maybe to cast off false images that she kept of God, that all of us keep about God. And in those times when we have spiritual doubts or spiritual questions, to realize that those may be the very times that God is drawing the closest to us and that we ought to pay attention. When we hear the readings about these disciples after Jesus rose from the dead, all of their doubts, is this really the resurrected Christ? If there are times when you have spiritual doubts and spiritual questions, may we see in the testimony of Scripture and in the testimony of some of the saints who likewise had spiritual doubts, that those may be the very moments when God is drawing the closest to you to give you assurance, to believe whether or not you're at a place in your life where it's easy to believe. Because sometimes it's at those most challenging and difficult times where you begin to doubt that God is drawing closest. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God for people like Mother Teresa. I guess whose letters were revealed. Someone who followed the Christ so closely and yet found moments of spiritual desolation and isolation. And yet who clearly was about as close to Christ as one could ever be. <clears throat> Thanks be to God. Amen.